The Stirling acquisition in 2022 has opened the door to a new, largely uncontested $200 billion plus business for AMD, with Q1 being a pivotal step forward. However, before we get started with that, I'd like to tell you that there's something I really didn't like about the Q1 earnings call, and I'll be covering that towards the end of this video, so stay tuned for that. And now, let's get started. Since the Stirling acquisition, AMD has been positioning itself to dominate what is expected to be a $200 billion plus market by the end of this decade, AI at the edge. This is made possible by FPGAs, Field Programmable Gate Arrays, the key technology onboarded via the Stirling acquisition that allows chips to reconfigure themselves on the go and thus allows AMD to run AI at the edge in a much more efficient way. Going forward, AI will extend its reach beyond data centers and make its way into billions of devices at the edge. But running AI on devices is different. It requires much higher levels of energy efficiency and overall versatility. FPGAs excel at this function like no other kind of chip can, and Stirling is the undisputed leader in the field. The acquisition has therefore set AMD apart from traditional competitors, making it practically impossible for them to compete in this emerging space, at least in the next five years. Going forward, this business promises to evolve into something like data center GPUs for NVIDIA at present. In the graph below, you can see how just three years before the acquisition, Stirling had a global FPGA market share of 52%, far ahead of Intel at 35%. Intel actually got into this space by acquiring Altera in 2015, which at the time was competing head-to-head -head with Stirling. However, with Pat Gelsinger now leading Intel, the situation may vary going forward, but AMD's resulting roadmap is strong. Many experts have told me repeatedly that FPGAs were not going to work for AI inferences and that therefore the Stirling acquisition was going to be effectively useless. Yet in Q1 2024, we saw AMD announce its second generation of versatile adaptive SoC, claiming that this will now enable customers to quote unquote, rapidly add highly performant and efficient AI capabilities to a broad range of products. As I anticipated, it seems that AMD has worked it out. AMD has gotten FPGAs to work for AI and is able to deploy them at a marginal cost via its chiplet architecture, which makes connecting different compute engines relatively easy. Notably, hypothetical competitors need to not only surpass AMD's FPGA technology, but also its interconnect technology called Infinity Fabric so that they can connect FPGAs to any other compute engine as seamlessly. This seems unlikely for the foreseeable future, and that is why I believe the Stirling acquisition will pay off considerably over the long term. At present, the embedded segment is dragging down AMD's financial, financial results as customers focus on correcting their inventory levels. But the long-term opportunity is vast as the economy becomes inference-driven. By that, I mean that in 10 years' time, the economy will run mostly on AI models making predictions, so inferences. As previously explained, a big percentage of all inferences will actually happen at the edge where AMD is optimally suited to serve customers and defensively so. Over the long term, 200 billion may even fall short. Here's what AMD CEO Lisa Su said during the call about this new business. Longer term, we see AI at the edge as a large growth opportunity that will drive increased demand for compute across a wide range of devices. It will be exciting to see how Versal does over the coming years. Meanwhile, AMD is simultaneously fighting a battle with its much larger rival Nvidia, with experts across the board refusing to assign AMD any odds of succeeding. Coming up next, I explain why I still believe AMD will give Nvidia a run for its money. The market thinks AMD's efforts to disrupt Nvidia's dominance in the AI space have now been neutralized, with the slower than quote unquote expected ramp of AMD's MI300 and the launch of Nvidia's Blackboard chip. Yet, an in depth review of these concerns suggests otherwise. The market was disappointed with AMD raising the guidance for fiscal year 2024 AI GPU revenue to only 4 billion in Q1 2024 instead of 6 billion. Although this is indeed far less than Nvidia sales, the market is foregoing how quick AMD's ramp up has been. The MI300 GPU has surpassed 1 billion in quarterly sales in just two quarters, which is AMD's fastest ramp up in history. In my view, the market is falling prey to anchor bias. It is rejecting the thesis simply because AMD quote unquote failed to execute below a certain arbitrary number when projecting the current rate of progress suggests that AMD will take considerable market share over the coming years. 
In the graph below, you can see how AMD, the black line, is trending up non-linearly, although in absolute terms, of course, the progression remains minute relative to NVIDIA. Qualitatively, it was also a great milestone to see Microsoft announce that AMD's MI300 GPUs are going to be offered to Azure customers as an alternative to NVIDIA's processors. It takes a while for customers to trust the new chip and to lean on it at scale, but this is a great first step forward that may compound if Microsoft chooses to continue scaling out the MI300. Further, the market was concerned about NVIDIA's new Black Ball chip because it was made of chiplets. However, as I explained in my last NVIDIA update, Blackball is actually made of two monolithic chips that act as chiplets at the network level. This means that this new approach does not free NVIDIA from the complexities of the monolithic approach. Therefore, the dynamic depicted in the graph below remains in play. As we move towards smaller process nodes, the complexity of NVIDIA's approach grows exponentially, while AMD is less so. AMD thus remains in a position to iterate its way to similar and if not superior levels of compute performance than NVIDIA, but at a lower cost. Further, AMD's chiplet architecture gives them an advantage on the inference side too, and I talked about this in my last AMD update, which you can find here on my channel or on my Substack for free, of course. Here's what Lisa Sue said during the call about inference. Right now, I think MI300X is in a sweet spot for inference, uh, very, very strong inference performance. Um, I see uh, as we bring in additional products uh, you know, later this year into 2025, uh, that that will um, continue to be a strong spot for us. And then we're also um, enhancing our training performance and our software roadmap to go along with it. In this battle, however, AMD is encountering major complexity on the software side, where NVIDIA has a near insurmountable barrier to entry. However, by pivoting towards an open source format, as I discussed in my last AMD update, AMD has a chance of succeeding. Even if AMD doesn't thrive on this front, I believe, as I was explaining previously, that its, road its roadmap is differentiated enough for the company to succeed over the long term regardless. Hence, the asymmetry of the thesis. Lastly, the market is also not discounting the versatility of AMD's chiplet architecture, which allows AMD to iterate its products faster. This is because to modify a chip, AMD doesn't have to rebuild the whole thing. It can simply tweak a part of the chip as demonstrated by the difference between the MI300A and the MI300X. The MI300A contains three G CPU tiles, where the MI300X contains three GPU tiles. Ultimately, catering for decidedly different end applications, but the difference between the two isn't that big for AMD. It's just substituting some of the parts, and then the chips are ready to go for two very different applications at a marginal cost. During the call, Lisa Su explained how this allows AMD to work with customers closely and how they plan multiple generations ahead, addressing the market's fears about AMD's AI GPUs falling behind. She said, When we uh, start with the roadmap, I mean, we, we always think about it as a multi-year, multi-generational roadmap. So we have, you know, the follow-ons to MI300 as well as the next next generations, you know, well in development. Um, I think what is true is we're getting much closer to our top AI customers. They're actually giving us uh, significant feedback uh, on the roadmap and what we need to uh, meet their needs. Our chiplet architectural is that uh, architecture is actually very flexible, and so that allows us to actually, you know, actually make changes to the roadmap as necessary. So we're very confident in our ability to continue to be very competitive. Although I am confident in AMD's roadmap on the FPGA and inference side, and on its ability to take market share from Nvidia, I am quite disappointed with some events that have unfolded after the Q1 earnings. In the next section, I discuss this matter in depth. During the Q1 call, Lisa Su sounded confident about AMD's ability to be a key player in the AI PC space and made great emphasis on the partnership with Microsoft. But in their latest AI event, Microsoft put AMD on the backseat and promoted Qualcomm as their top partner. Here's what Lisa said about Microsoft and AI PCs during the Q1 call. We see AI as the biggest inflection point in PCs since the internet, with the ability to deliver unprecedented productivity and usability gains. We're working very closely with Microsoft and a broad ecosystem of partners to enable the next generation of AI experiences powered by Ryzen processors, with more than 150 ISVs on track to be developing for AMD AI PCs by the end of the year. I found this mismatch fairly disappointing. The development is worth watching closely because Qualcomm develops ARM chips, which stand for Advanced Risk Machine Chips, which essentially have a better energy efficiency than x86 processors. 
the ones Intel and AMD use because they run on simpler instruction sets. Until now, the PC industry was not adopting ARM processors because most of the software was written for x86. Transitioning to ARM chips therefore requires rewriting a lot of the software. But since AI is so computationally intense, it seems that Microsoft now believes moving to ARM is worth it. I will be analyzing this situation in depth over the coming quarter and will share my thoughts on the next quarterly update, so stay tuned for that. And now to conclude the update, my view is that AMD's financials remain in great shape and that long term the company is optimally positioned for AI at the edge. At the end of the quarter, AMD had 6 billion in cash and just 0.75 billion in short term debt and 1.7 billion in long term debt. The balance sheet therefore remains in great shape affording AMD plenty of powder to carry on making the necessary investments to secure a leading role in AI. Cash from operations came in at $521 million for the quarter, but you will observe in the graph below that this metric has been trending down. This has been driven by AMD's client, gaming, and embedded segments, which have been correcting over the past two years. As these businesses revert to growth going forward, cash from operations should continue trending back up adding to AMD's already strong balance sheet. Although I am disappointed about the situation with Microsoft, I see AMD's roadmap evolving well, positioning AMD ideally to dominate AI at the edge, which as discussed is going to be a huge business. And I think it's going to be relatively uncontested for AMD. FPGAs are a vital technology in this domain and AMD has a clear lead, if not actually a cornered resource. Until next time, and thank you very much for watching. Now, if you enjoyed this, can I please ask you one favor, which is, can you please share this with one friend whom you think may enjoy this video? These deep dives are for free, and so the only way this grows is with your help. So thank you very much in advance, and take care.